Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about that Zelda Skyward Sword Amiibo and why Nintendo is making a massive mistake with that Amiibo, even though it looks gorgeous. And yeah, we'll be giving away, you know, one or two of those during E3, but man, um, feel like they're making a mistake here. And in addition to that, uh, we have some news about how xCloud appears to be semi-confirmed as coming to Switch ahead of time, thanks to the Apple vs. Epic lawsuit. All right, folks. First off, uh, you guys know about the Skyward Sword Amiibo uh, that's been announced, right? It's pictured up there. You guys have seen it. I know that the picture's kind of cut off. It is what it is. Camera angles and all that. I uh, want to make sure you get a good look at me more so than this. But yeah, Skyward Sword Amiibo. It looks great, right? You guys have seen it. I'll throw up an image of it. Um, we're going to read off what this Amiibo does for Skyward Sword HG. First off, it's a $25 Amiibo. I don't have a problem with the price. So I'm not here to criticize the price. We've seen other Amiibo release at way more expensive than the $12, the $15, the $18 bucks we've seen Amiibo go for. So it being $25 featuring two characters doesn't really bother me that much. It's an optional item that you don't have to buy. I don't really care about the price. Except for one aspect. And that's what we have to get into is what the hell this Amiibo does. So we, there was Amiibo functionality teased for Skyward Sword HD in the past, but we didn't know what it meant. And now we know what this Amiibo does anyways. We don't know if other Amiibo can do things as well. So let's talk about what this was. In Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, the, the adventure takes place. This is coming off Nintendo's official website, by the way. I'm not paraphrasing other people. I'm taking this straight from the horse's mouth, okay? As official as it can get, I will link down to the description to Nintendo's official page talking about this Amiibo. Uh, the adventure takes place between the skies where Link and his friends reside and the vast world of the surface that lies beneath the clouds. Normally, you can only return from the surface to the sky by way of a designated save point, but using the Zelda and Loftwing amiibo while on the surface in the game will allow you to return to the skies from anywhere on the surface, even inside dungeons, and that's a big one. Inside dungeons? It's like a save point inside dungeons? What? Okay. Uh, if you then use the Zelda and Loftwing Amiibo again while well, in the sky, you can return to the spot on the surface where you used it before. So if you run out of items while exploring the surface, for example, you can quickly return to the bazaar in Skyloft to replenish your supplies. Once you're done shopping, the Amiibo allows you to quickly zap back to the surface and pick up where you left out. Now, there have been items like this in Zelda before. This isn't a new concept for an item. But the items have never been left behind Amiibo. And that's the fundamental issue here. Nintendo's charging you 60 dollars for skyward sword hd and has a massive quality of life improvement because one of the most annoying things about about um skyward sword is that the sky and the surface are are, are disconnected and because they're disconnected which limitation to the system at the time having a large open world that massive sky and the massive surface all connected together really wasn't that possible back then but Here's the thing. The hard part is, is that there's only designated spots where you could go up when oftentimes when you need to return to the sky are at inconvenient times, running out of items. Maybe you need to make some more stamina potions. Maybe you need to make this. Maybe you need to make, like, there's all these things you want to do. Maybe you came to the surface just to do some bug hunting and you want to return, but to return, you might have to backtrack 20 minutes. Because the surface, for those who don't know Skyward Sword, the surface itself is like a mini dungeon unto itself, making it very inconvenient to need to backtrack uh, to get to a place to fly out of there. And obviously in dungeons, by the time you get to the dungeons, you might be so depleted you want to fly out of there anyways, and sometimes you can't. So it it's very uh, frustrating, and this is a massive quality of life improvement. So my issue is they're taking this quality of life improvement, which should be part of a $60 package of what's just an hd one i mean let's just call it what this it it's basically an emulated hd version of skyward sword um that's running in 60 fps and 1080p which by the way 60 fps is a quality of life improvement 1080p is a quality of life improvement so is the fact that it's adding traditional controls those are all quality of life improvements but there's no changes within the game until this and this is being locked behind a 25 dollar action figure basically not even an action figure this is a 25 dollar statue and no problem with the price of the statue on its own, but I do have a problem when the biggest quality of life improvement I have seen to date for Skyward Sword HD is locked behind that. That should not be allowed. And Nintendo has been doing this with Amiibo from the very beginning, locking to... I mean, guys, remember there was a, a, a special mode in Metroid locked behind an Amiibo? Dumb. Remember when, uh, even in Twilight Princess HD, doubling the damage done by enemies, or doubling the damage taken, whichever way it was, by enemies um, in the game, with the Ganondorf Amiibo. 
dumb. It was like an extra difficulty mode locked behind an amiibo. Now you have this, $25 to add a quality of life improvement to a $60 game. I'm going to call Nintendo up for this. I'm going to end up buying the Amiibo because I want the Amiibo itself. And obviously, because I have the Amiibo, I'll use it in the game. I get it. You could say that makes me a hypocrite. We're giving away as many of these during E3 as we can get our hands on dude, with pre-orders. Because I get it. I get it. It's expensive. It's going to be hard to get. And that's another thing. It's going to be hard to get. It's going to be sold out day one. Scalpers are going to take advantage of the fact that this mode's locked behind it. And it's going to lead to a problem where people are going to spend 60 bucks on Skyward Sword HD not to have the opportunity to get this. They might not ever be able to get this for a year, maybe two years. And they're going to have a major quality of life improvement locked away. That, to me, is wrong on many, many levels. It's not new. Nintendo has done this before. I just kind of hope they were done. Not Maybe not done with Amiibo, but done locking major things behind it. What they did with Breath of the Wild, to me, was fine. The biggest thing locked behind Breath of the Wild Amiibo was what? Epona? And even Epona isn't necessarily the best horse in the game. If you work at it, you can get a horse that's slightly better than Epona. So it's like, it's, it's, it's more so a nostalgia thing than it is actually giving you an advantage. So, I well, besides not having to get a horse at all, I guess you'd argue that's an advantage, but... I mean, the point is, it doesn't really... The, the game itself is fine without it. It's complete without it. You don't need Epona, right? So, I... This is... Oh, it, it's frustrating that Nintendo's continuing to do this. But we're going to move on because we have a really positive story. Uh, because of this Apple versus Epic lawsuit, a lot's been going on. I'm not going to summarize the entire lawsuit. The brux of it basically is Apple... Or, I should say, uh, Epic wanted to charge virtual currency uh, within their game. And they wanted to avoid the 30% Apple tax and make those charges go through the game itself and through their own servers rather than run those charges through the Apple Store. Because of that, Apple banned Fortnite off of their platform because they say that Fortnite is not allowed to circumvent uh, Apple's you know, wallet system and all that stuff in order to sell currency and avoid that 30% charge. Uh, which, by the way, that 30% charge was being passed on to consumers with virtual currency being more expensive because of it. So, really, consumers were getting a better deal going through Epic. And Epic's brux of the argument back then was that Apple does allow other non-video game applications to charge you money for parts of those applications outside of the Apple ecosystem. That's one of the strongest arguments app, app, uh, I'm sorry, Epic has, is that Apple lets other apps that aren't games do what Apple or do what Epic wants to do. Anyways, this lawsuit's been crazy. There's a lot of dumb stuff coming up because the court system doesn't understand gaming. And Microsoft themselves is heavily involved in this lawsuit because Microsoft has xCloud that they want to run on Apple devices. The problem is Apple won't let them run a native app. They won't run, let them run a native app because all the games are delivered through the app instead of through Apple's store. So even though those games are part of a subscription service, Microsoft can't put an app you know, that you can even subscribe to through Apple Store on an iPhone because the games delivered in it are not delivered through Apple Store. They're delivered through xCloud and Game Pass, and, and they have a massive problem with this. Uh, and I, I understand why. Android's obviously an open platform and lets you do it. So it, it's a very frustrating situation for Microsoft, who isn't trying to sell you games. So what's the problem, Apple? Oh, right, Apple has their own video game service in Apple Arcade. That's a problem. Now, moving beyond all that, what came out during this lawsuit has been completely redacted, and I can't find the information anywhere because it was redacted before it went public. It was redacted by Nintendo. There was a casual conversation going on uh, in the courtroom between uh, a representative from Microsoft and uh, people from the Apple side of things, and they were talking about xCloud specifically, and parts of it were redacted by Nintendo because in this conversation came up Things that Nintendo deemed as not fit for the public because they're part of active negotiations between Nintendo and Microsoft. And the entire thing was about xCloud. So, Stefan Totillo, former editor-in-chief of uh, Kotaku. Now he works at a different outlet. I do apologize, Stefan, that I didn't look it up while recording this. Uh, but he put up a, a 
uh, basically a tweet showing two documents from the recent uh, court case that's still ongoing and probably will be ongoing for months and months and months. These court cases always get dragged down for a long time before any resolution is met. And the thing is, in these documents was a representative from Microsoft talking specifically about xCloud on iOS and xCloud obviously on Android and other platforms. And consoles came up during this conversation, kind of casually, more as an aside, not necessarily as a main brux of the the conversation but one entire sheet and then part of another sheet so this stuff is actually quite common where things get redacted uh, before certain things become public uh, because it c- contains trade secrets or some other um, contractual thing that isn't that, that might be relevant to the court case but isn't relevant to public knowledge uh, and so sometimes you don't always get everything uh, from a court case and in this case this stuff is important that it was redacted because while I was just talking about xCloud on consoles, it mentioned supposedly xCloud on Nintendo Switch. Now, the interesting thing about that mention is the redaction wasn't by Microsoft. It wasn't by Epic or Apple. It was by Nintendo. The reason, because every time something is redacted, a reason must be stated, a reason that Nintendo redacted these statements from Microsoft from the public release of the documents is because Nintendo states that Microsoft and Nintendo are in active negotiations and information about those negotiations were contained in the redacted information. And we know the redacted information, thanks to Stefan Tatillo, and obviously all the conversation around that redacted information was about xCloud coming to consoles. So remember how we've been speculating about how... uh, you know, Jeff Grubb mentioned that the console in the background was Phil Spencer. The Switch means something. He didn't know what. Uh, then the Switch appeared in the background of another Microsoft event quite prominently alongside the Series X and Series S. And we speculated xCloud this, xCloud that. I even made a prediction, a bold prediction, that xCloud would be announced for Nintendo Switch at E3. Now, I don't know that xCloud is actually going to get announced at, at, by, by Microsoft or Nintendo uh, at E3. But what I do know is, sounds like there's active negotiations. This is like official legal mumbo-jumbo redacted by Nintendo because of active negotiations between Nintendo and Microsoft and these the stuff that was redacted was about xCloud. So xCloud sounds like it's probably coming to Switch. It's probably coming to Nintendo Switch. So that's exciting. Don't know what that means we're getting Game Pass, but it does mean that we're liking an xCloud. That is... Oh, that's exciting stuff. It'll be nice to see um, just unifying the streaming games, uh, having a, a reliable streaming service. Also... The potential that Game Pass could be part of that is very enticing. And I could do some comparisons for you guys if Game Pass is because I have an Xbox Series X with, with Game Pass. I obviously have a gaming PC and then I have a uh, Switch. And so what I could do is like streaming over Switch versus, um, you know, native on Xbox versus like, I don't know, native on PC or streaming on PC. However, we want to do those comparisons. Uh, that'll be fun. Imagine Halo Infinite is playable on Nintendo Switch this holiday. Talk about a value proposition. Also, guys, that's going to wrap up this video, but be sure to join us tonight at 8 p.m. Central Time for our podcast. If you're watching this later, go back and watch it. I think it's episode 9 of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. We've got lots of special guests. Good stuff happening. Also join us for our E3 coverage on June 12th, although now Summer Game Fest is happening in June 10th. And I'll have to stream that. But we're not making a big special event out of it. That's just going to be a standard uh, live reaction video or live reaction stream. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you all in the next video.